Do you know how many universities are in China today? That's right, 2,688 universities are present in China. Today, I'm going to show you the top university in Western China. Look, look, look. This is Sichuan University's large, big, northern gate. Now, hello everyone. My name is Oni Mer. I am from Seattle, Washington. Now, today we have arrived at Sichuan University. This university is incredible with rich history. So, in 2018, I had the privilege of studying Chinese at Sichuan University. Now, for many of my foreign friends, they don't know what it's like to study, but they want to study at a Chinese university. So today, I'm going to show you the amazing life at Sichuan University. Sichuan University is located between Chengdu City's first and second ring roads, which is the Chinese uh, system for large areas of land. Now, this, the campuses are all so big that they actually have their own bus system. Not only is there a university bus system, but there's also the public bus system in the back. It's so convenient. One of the things I love about Sichuan University is it's not just a place for students. You see the Sichuan and Chengdu community all playing. If you look over here, you can see some young, young children just playing and surrounding themselves in this educational, lovely, beautiful environment. This is the Mingdulo. It's an incredibly famous building on this campus. So this campus has 15 different large buildings, and this is one of them. Now, the reason this building is so special is that many other Chinese campuses do not have this building. It's an administration office-like type building where all the professors and administration people work. As you can see, it has a very traditional style on the top that is similar to other buildings around China. Absolutely incredible. Okay. I want to go to your name Right here is a research institute building. I have not been inside. I've never been a research student. That will come in years to come. Every day in the morning at 8 a.m. or so, maybe maybe 7 to 8 a.m., there were just this road would be so packed with people that are all coming to the elementary school. So if you are trying to go to class, you have to leave early or else you'll get stuck in this traffic. So, as I shared earlier, this Sichuan University not only has university students, but it also has local people that live here. So these local people and the professors that live on campus sometimes have children, and these children will go to the elementary schools. The elementary schools and kindergartens that are right here. So, this is class one, grade two. As you can see, there's many, many classes at this one school, and they all carry these around in the morning. It's so busy in the morning and there's so many different students that are walking around and going about. Okay. And then this wall, they rebuilt this. This whole street here, the cement is all new. I remember the first time I came to Sichuan University, I was so confused why there were walls and fences and these gates everywhere. And then I learned that in China, within the campus and around the campus, the walls are there to protect the people within. And this is uh, seen in many different ways throughout Chinese history. For example, the Great Wall of China was built to protect the people within. So even today, this type of system to protect the people within a gated community is still present today. So, if you look over here, this is the Xuesheng Shenghuo Chu, or the dormitory for the students. Actually, as a foreign student, we're not allowed to live in these specific buildings. This is mainly for uh, Chinese students that are either doing undergrad or graduate study. But you can see that they look quite different than that which we're used to back in a different foreign country like in America. One example is that 
there's five to seven people living in one. Another example is the layout. It looks almost like an apartment style building rather than what we're used to as a dormitory. Some small differences. But it is really amazing to see the vast number of students that are studying at this university. And there's many dorms just like this one at Sichuan. We just arrived at the Kwaidi Center. So, as you can see, the dormitories are here and the Kwaidi Center is here. Many different students like to order Kwaidi because it's so convenient and cheap. Why not? It's this close. My dorm is right there. I got lost. So this is the, the library. And then right here is the foreign student dorm. This place used to be my home away from home. So we just arrived at the Liu Shisheng Gong Yu, or the Overseas Student Dormitory. So this place not only has dormitory, but also all foreign affairs. So on the second floor, you can go for any foreign question or problem right down the hallway from your room. So I was on room 303, right up there, you can see. It was incredibly convenient to have all of the foreign related things in one place. At Sichuan University, there's 3,700 foreign exchange students, 27,000 graduate and postgrad students, and 30,700 that are regular undergrad students. The population is absolutely tremendous, especially compared to foreign standards. Sichuan University has three different campuses. Today, we are at the oldest campus, Wangjiang. This campus is primarily for postgraduate and doctorate students, while the other two campuses, Huaxiba and Jiang'an, are primarily for undergraduate students, the newest and most beautiful campuses. One of my most favorite parts of being a student at Sichuan Dashui was the convenience of where I live. So right down that street is the foreign dorm, and then a walk away, two minutes, is the hospital. And then right there is the bank. If you keep walking down that way three minutes, all different types of restaurants and cafeterias. If you walk three minutes down that way, you can go all the way to different types of physical exercise places, gym, track, anything you need. And then five minutes in straight ahead is the foreign student building to study Chinese. Incredibly convenient, accessible, and it's a beautiful walk anywhere you go. Ah, Oh, 
，出现我们说很多普通话，怎么还不标准？有些什么提的，有些不标准，就说不标准，特别标准。没问题，我觉得你你说成都话的时候，我觉得非常好听。就在这里吗？啊，就在这儿，可以。啊哈。啊，多少钱啊？哎呀，过来就是了，没事。在微信里在这里。Recently, the football field is having maintenance done, so we can't go in. But I remember last year, I would always go and play football in these fields. I wanna go play. I wanna go play football. No one is there. It's empty. I would say the biggest difference with the athletic complex in China and America. Is that these places are open to the whole public? So if you are a local individual, or if you're coming from elsewhere, you can just come into campus and exercise here. Now, in many universities in America, you can do this, but maybe you have to pay, or you maybe it's not that accessible. But in China, it's actually very common. So every night. On this field and the other athletic complex, different local individuals as well as outsiders just came in and filled the field and played. The fee in America, you have to—it's—it's it's in our total cost. So maybe my university costs fifty thousand dollars, but one thousand dollars is athletic fee. So you pay, but they don't—it's kind of hidden, so they don't tell you. So. I would say that the American athletic complexes are more usually higher quality, and they have more to offer. There's more things that you can do there. There's more variety, and the reason for that is that the students and anyone that comes to use the facility has to pay. But in China, the government actually pays for the whole facility. You may be wondering how much is tuition in China compared to America, let's say. Now, one semester at this university is about 2,500 renminbi. So that's about 5,000 renminbi for one year. So if we convert that to American dollars and divide that by seven, that's about 700 U.S. dollars for one year. Now, in America, let's see. So at a state university for one year, it is about 40. To fifty thousand U.S. dollars. So let's say forty-five thousand U.S. dollars. Now, if we convert that to renminbi, three hundred and fifty thousand renminbi, whereas they pay five thousand renminbi for one year. So, as we can see, significantly cheaper in China with a similar quality. So, I highly encourage. Everyone to think about the costs of studying in America versus studying in a foreign country like China. Save a lot of money and get amazing experiences. One of my favorite parts about being a student at Sichuan University was the convenience and proximity of everything you needed. So you have a supermarket right here, and on the same street, a printer shop, a classroom supply shop. Oh, flower shop, fruit stand, milk tea, coffee shop, and restaurants—all just by walking one minute away from everything. It's incredible. Meow meow meow. I like it. He will come out of the morning when he is in Sichuan University. Every day we drink milk tea. Every day we drink milk tea, but in America,、uh, milk tea is too expensive. So maybe we only drink it a couple times a month. But many people don't like milk tea in America. Coffee is cheaper than milk tea in America. Milk tea is about three to five dollars. So about that's about twenty to thirty renminbi in America. But coffee. Is some place maybe some places about two to five dollars, so it's anywhere from ten to 
30 RMB. Mm. In America, the students don't have bikes. We, we, we don't have bikes, so we walk everywhere. So <clears throat> we either walk or drive a car. So it's really, it was really nice every day to see so many students walking, biking. It felt, it felt like a college campus, college community. So this way, I walk this way every day on my walk to school. So in this store, uh, you can grab a cake or a pastry or bread on your way to class. Right over here, you can grab any sort of fruit that you want. And then if you keep going down that way, you can get uh, something called jianbing, which is a type of Chinese pancake, Chinese sandwich. So it, this street actually has so much convenience for breakfast, lunch, dinner. We just arrived at the cafeteria. I would often eat here uh, one or two times every day. <clears throat> so one thing that's really different in China is that the cafeteria food is so cheap and it's really good and it's fresh. So <clears throat> you can get a meal for one or two US dollars. So you can look right here. This whole meal is just 10 kwai. So this is about one to two US dollars. So in America, we spend five to ten dollars on one meal. But you can get a full meal for about one to two dollars. So cheap, delicious, and fresh. You can see different meats right here, chicken, beef, pork, with the amazing spices that back in America we did not have on our meats. You have different types of Chinese food as well as some foreign food. So like you have Korean, Japanese food as well. You have bread, steamed bread here eggs. Oh, I miss it. I miss it. This bus is so comfortable. It's so cheap. Only two yuan, two renminbi, which is about 10 cents in America. So it's incredibly convenient and so easy to ride this around the university. Uh, I wish at my university back in America we had a bus system like this, but my university was too small maybe. Oh, this bus is going to Beiman, then Xiemen, Nanmen, right? Xiemen? Huh. They even have oranges growing naturally in here. <laughs> Within this Sichuan University's campus, there's actually local people that live just right here. So, Within these local places to live, they actually have lots of different things that you can eat that grow naturally. So, one example is this. Do you know what this is? This is the famous Sichuan peppercorn, or huajiao. Oh, it smells so good. Today, I just wanted to bring you all for lunch to one of my most favorite spots. So this spot is called Chuangwan Shougong Shuijiao. So it is a jiaozi, or a dumpling place. So one of the best parts of this is people that live here also have their restaurant here. One cost for rent business and rent. Ah, uh, hello, brother. Uh, I want to eat a sleep. Yeah. Uh, 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 Chinese cabbage and pork dumplings. So I want one Chinese cabbage and pork dumpling. And and the zanaiga. And also potato. Yeah. Potato. <laughs> the potato and pork potato. dumpling. They're so delicious. Dumpling. Oh thank you, thank you. Gansheni. When you eat jiaozi, the dumplings, you can add so many different flavors. So, the spicy Sichuan 
pepper sauce with oil. I like a little bit of salt. I like a little bit of Weijin or MSG. Some garlic. Some Sichuan peppercorn. Oh, and then also some sauce. And then you mix it up. And this is where all the flavor is. And this place is very special at Sichuan University because it looks like a house. You walk in and it's a beautiful, beautiful owners that welcome you and they can speak English and Chinese and the local dialect. Now, usually students and teachers are the only ones that know about this spot. And this place has been around for over 20 years. So much experience and flavor all in one place. Mm. This has been the first episode of Walking in Chengdu. I'm Oni, and I'll see you next time.